time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limb Walker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Welcome back. Another week of Up North Journal Live. We are back, folks. Live in the cabin. Because it's the week and the day before Christmas Eve. What? A week and a day? It'll be Christmas Eve. Ay, 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 ay. See what I got to work with, folks? That's right. You got to work with me, buddy old pal. Wow. You know, you just can't make this stuff up. No, you can't. How are you doing tonight? I am doing fantastic. Fantastic. Huh? Absolutely. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're doing fantastic. Right? Right? Uh, now, if I just get the live feed, it'd be good. Did, that, did, did uh, Facebook change again? <laughs> I was laughing at you during the live tease, and all of a sudden I look down, and my phone looks a little different as well. So Uh-huh. See? Yeah, so. Uh, make fun of me and see what happens. Well, it's like I told you. I said, see what I got? To, uh, now you know how I feel, what I got to deal with. Right, and they did it to you again. It, right. Hello, Mark Coleman and Tammy Dell. What is going on? How is it? How is the weather in Indiana, Mr. Coleman? Mr. Genzel, you know it was I think a year ago today that Tom actually shot his elk. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. I thought I saw you post that. Today. Yeah, I think you did post that. If I'm not mistaken. Merry Christmas, Tammy. So. See, even Tammy's in the Christmas spirit. What do you mean, even Tammy? Well, you I make it sound like she's not a cheerful no. person. Well, she is, and I am, and you're the one looking at me funny because I said a week and a day before Christmas Eve. That has nothing to do with being cheerful. <laughs> wow. He, he, Danny uses that fuzzy math. So. It's the new math. Yeah, okay, whatever. All right, I got I got to figure out here how to get that. You know what? Facebook just does not make it easy on anybody. Right. To get around this thing and try to post something off of your own page. It's convoluted. So. Yeah, they kind of do that. But how are you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing good. It's getting towards the end of the year. Work is slowing down. Yeah? Yep. Okay. It's not technically slowing down, but it seems like everybody and their brother is taking vacation trips just to match up. So Every, yeah. Everybody but me. I'm working through it. You are. Yeah. Because you bring joy to people. Like music on this weekend coming from the orchestra and swing. Okay. All right, so before we actually start our record tonight, I want to address something that has been kind of going on since the beginning of time. Well, it, we're here with Facebook. It, it's it's been an issue. Um, we're getting a couple people that say the audio's low. We we took some stuff down tonight, so let me let me bring audio back up just a touch here. Let's see if that corrects things a little bit. Okay. Hey, it's windy where Mark Coleman's at. Is it? Kind of like here. Okay. Windy. So there we go. I brought it up a little bit, but I don't want it to be overmodulated. So Right. We're trying to tweak this thing, and we're trying to figure it out. And here, here's and the issue. Nancy even says bad volume here. Okay. So that but that tells us it's either low or high or it's overmodulated. Uh, those are the things, th the things that were, okay, she says you can't turn up anymore. So what happens is everything on our end seems to be nice and clear. And then Facebook likes to take and compress everything and mush it all together. And some people say it sounds good. Other people say it sounds low. Other people say, no, no, it's too high. And other people say, no, it sounds great. Tammy says it got better. Okay. Well, I brought our audio up a little bit. I, I did make some tweaks after the last week's show. So Tom Gintel says better. Good. Okay. There we go. See, we're going in the right direction. So. And Nancy Jackson says, yeah, I can hear Good. That's good. That is good. You tell me differently, though, about her hearing. I say nothing. Do not get me in trouble. He's lying. 
She's going to find, you know, we play cards one night. We, we have a get-together with the couples here. She will get you. She's saying it's, it, it's tinny. Yeah, well, I can't. I can't do anything with that. Are you tinny? No, no, but I can't. I can't throw base. I can throw some base on it, but oh, some base. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing started here. Enough of this. Here we go. Stand by in three, two, and one. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with a. I don't know what band to fall. End of the year. <laughs> End of the year. So, uh, I tell you what. Another another year. Another year is upon this us. This makes it. Well, we started back in together in fourteen, so this is our twenty. End. Yeah, twenty fourteen. So this is twenty twenty one. Be twenty twenty two. Be eight years. It'll be eight years. This coming year, I think you're going to be pushing your four hundredth show. April is when we came back, right? April or May? No, we came back in uh, July, I think. We no, we came back in April this year. Yes. Right, but when we came back in twenty fourteen. It was the middle of the summer. Because we were in shorts. I remember that. Yeah, sitting out on the back porch of the house that we were renting. Yes. Um, Can you believe it's been that long? Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Mike, you're taking an attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till the end of the show to see what kind of attitude. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it, it, she thinks it's Mike. No, I don't think so. That's right, Nancy. No. You go, girl. Wow. Ganging up on me here, I tell you what. I, what am I going to do? don't know. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on the Up North Drill. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. We'll see you so next year. So this will be eight years coming up in 2022. Uh, this is show number 627 for me. You're pushing close to 400. And our live stream, hey, this is our... 227th show and um, live show. We had our 600th show this year. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and we, we were off the air actually for about three or four months because of COVID. Our COVID and, and moving, moving and life. life's <laughs> life. life's adventures. Yeah, so uh, you know, and, and right now let's go ahead and we'll, we'll get this uh, out of the way too. That this. More than likely will be our last show for this calendar year. Next Thursday is the day before Christmas Eve, which is Festivus. Yes, it is Festivus. Festivus for the rest Tammy of us. Tammy says, "Grin and bear it, Mike." Wow. Like I said, that'll do it for us this week. Right. <laughs> uh, and then the week after that is going to be right before New Year's, and right. it's just the holidays. So you know what? It, it's been one of them years where we we didn't push a full year of episodes i think we're at 30 something so you know we're just gonna wrap it up after right. this show and, and then we'll join you the first thursday in 2022 that's right 2022 so so what'd you think about this year well i think we need to talk about our supporters that would be a good thing to do otherwise we, we might not have a next year <laughs> see you got me all flustered and we already jumped into this thing a little right. too far. So, all right, let's talk about the people who help us. And actually, it's still not too late to get to some of these and get you a, a quick stocking stuffer. You know what? That's right. And, and, you know, it's not too late. Nothing like going over to Buck Baits. Like I said, if you're in the vicinity of Sterling Heights, Michigan, and you can get down to 15 in Dodge Park, you can get to the brick and mortar store of Deer Camp. And within Deer Camp, they've got Buck Baits. You got to get down. Uh, you got to check out Julie. And company down at at, Buck, at Deer Camp, and inside they've got Buck, Buck Bates. And if you use your promo code UNJ20 while shopping at BuckBates.com, you'll get 20% off your order. You know we're finishing up the year, but you better start thinking about spring. And there's nothing better than thinking about Lincoln Road over the other side of the state. Uh, PackerMax.com. Use UNJ25, you'll get $25 off your order over there. And if you're into hunting coyotes, where can you get some calls? That's right. UNJ10 at JPO Game Calls. At get your 10% off your orders. Think about, I know uh, Chris Kreiner's out shooting them left and right. Oh, man, he's slaying them. Right? And uh, let's give a big shout-out. We're drinking coffee, Deer Camp Coffee, proud supporter of Up North Journal. Uh, get 10% off your order at DeerCampCoffee.com. But go check the website out because they got a bunch more stuff coming on board uh they've got candles 
They've got, um, they're going to have a bunch of more stuff hitting the, the, the website itself. Like I said, get to the brick and mortar store, get 10% off your order if you shop online at Deer Cab Coffee. And speaking of coffee, we are drinking tonight. This is a special blend called Cinnamon, or no, New Year's Blast. It's cinnamon graham with nuts and cream. And I want to tell you what, this, this is some good, good stuff tonight. It is really tasty. This is the first time I've ever tried it. It's kind of got that hazelnut taste with a little bit of, like I said, cinnamon in it, uh, graham cracker. Almost like a s'more. Almost. Almost. So, so <laughs> good stuff. And I tell you what, we wouldn't be amiss if we didn't head up to Newberry, Michigan, where it's another 28 degrees, and it looks like they got a lot more snow than they do last week. Uh, FM 123, they're uh, pushing our show up there. Also, chop stop at Cedars, get a good pizza, and they also have Deer Camp coffee. You know, with all the wind and everything, um, it didn't look like it was too windy up there. No, I don't think it was. And I tell you what, another sp sponsor for this last quarter, uh, if you need a T-shirt or something for Christmas, give me the gun stuff dot com get over there check out the t-shirts they have and uh, maybe pick up a, a shirt or two and uh, make make a, a stocking stuffer or a quick gift and that uh, website is give me the gun dot com there you go gotta like that too that's right so i guess now we can officially start the show i mean we started the show but you know what i mean right what do you want to talk about well it's the end of the year and wrapping up our year, it, it started out kind of slow. And I tell you what, it was just uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, Mark Coleman right back at you. And Mr. Ginzel as well. And Mr. Ginzel. So Mark Coleman says snow. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, there's snow. Even though it's 60 degrees here. It was actually 60 degrees this morning when I left for work. I know. And what when was I that night? Jeez, oh, Pete. So when I got home, it was like 50, right? 52. It's now 40 something. So, yeah, the front's moving through. You know, and hopefully everybody made it through. We know there's more tornadoes. People in Kentucky got slammed last week, you know. Um, you know, thoughts and prayers out to those people. And along those lines, let's just kind of, we'll, we'll kind of dovetail this right into some outdoor news. I saw something where Dr. Deer was talking. Somebody asked him, well, what happens to the animals during tornadoes and big violent outbreaks of, of weather like what we saw down in Kentucky and down in the, the Plain States there, you know, I mean, that thing hit 200 miles, over 250 miles on the ground. Five, six states got hit. And then right. Last night, there was another 20 tornadoes uh, from Nebraska all the way up into Minnesota. So, uh, but he said, that, you know, he said that what they, he has seen on their compound is the deer just run crazy. If they don't know what direction to go, they try to get down in hollers. Uh, get down in between, like maybe a river bottom, creek bottom, where there's maybe got a cliff wall they can get in and get out of the wind. They're trying to get out of the wind, but uh, they don't know what to do, you know. And he said they find deer, you know, that are got trees blowed on them, that are dead or injured, and they suffer just like, you know, right. And else. I found the article. Oh, did uh, you? Okay. Yeah, I found the article. And uh, at their facility, he has, I think, which is down south, right? Yes, I think they're in Texas. Okay, and he's had two storms pass over the facility in the last four years. He's also worked with disaster assessments on three hurricanes with associated tornadoes. Uh, it starts off by saying most cases they found deer dead or injured in the path of these storms. They've had trees fall on two of the best bucks at their own facility. So they found them pinned beneath, you know, it was it was sad to see, and, and you know, on his ranch there was or facility, it was a one was a two hundred inch buck, but it, the tree fell on. I mean, they don't know what to do. They don't know right. how to get out of the way of a storm. So, and I've often wondered that. You know, what are they doing flooding? Do they? You know, obviously they're going to try to run to high ground. But you know what? Animals are just as susceptible to uh, bad weather as we are. So, bottom line is, the, with uh, storms of low magnitudes. They tend to run wild. Mm -hmm. They seek out places with less wind, such as creek bottoms with high walls, and most don't make it. Yep. So, but if you keep on reading that article, he does go to say that nature, Mother Nature, has ways of taking care of things like this, and that's the reason most does have two fawns, and within four or five years, they can actually replenish the herd in, in a local area. So yep. It's a, it, exactly what you're saying. Uh, 
what it does is it regenerates the mass crops. It, redu it regenerates it. Uh, populations of acorns are driven. Um, and it says the breeding part of the whitetails is such that they're geared to exist in low populations where forage is scarce, but, they've, it, but they have the ability to saturate their range in five to seven years mm -hmm. after the disturbance. And think about this, too, for, for those uh, private landowners who don't want to cut their mature forests. Mother Nature will do it for you. <laughs> and, and, and It'll open it up for you and get some good undergrowth and then actually encourage uh, some, some new growth for uh, different habitat for animals. Exactly. And, and basically what he says is whether it's a tornado, a hurricane, a blizzard, even CWD, we have faith in whitetails to solve almost any tragedy. Yep. So, so there you go. That's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's sad, but it, it happens. It is. So. And Jerry Lambert is on. Congratulations to your brother, Jerry. Absolutely. Uh, and, and thank you. Yes, the, thank you for liking our new set. New to us here in 2021. Right. So. so, but, you know, just like you said there, you know, hearts go out to all those people in those down there, especially this time of year. It's just oh, terrible. There was a guy. I, I, I don't know the guy's name. Um, it didn't look like he was, you know, like some high roller. He, he comes, he said, I got to do something. He said, I feel like I, I need to give back. I need to do my part. And what did he do? He got his barbecue grill, threw it in the back of his truck, loaded up with some meat and some sides and some water, and he went down to Mayfield, Kentucky, parked in the center of town, started grilling and feeding people. Yep. And I was like, man, that's awesome. You know, and that, that's one good thing about people in America. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff going on right now, but you know what? There's, there is a lot of good. Uh, my faith in humanity has been restored just by reading that story. So, Absolutely. And, you know, and in times like that, you see what, whether, whatever your take is on what's going on in this world today, when things happen like that and you see people do that, it just restores faith. Yeah. Humanity, yep. Right? Absolutely. And, you know, and we know a, a, a few people down in that area. We haven't talked to them in a while, but people that we we used to uh, talk to quite a bit online in some different forums. And if if word can get down to those guys, you know, we're thinking about them and uh, hope for the best for them. You know, so uh, it'd be nice to hear from some of those guys if we ever get a chance to to talk to them here soon. So. Well, uh, and, and, and and like you said, you know, you got disasters like that and, and things that happen. But you found an article that was just just, just happened a day ago, right? Yeah, this uh, this was actually here in Michigan in Otsego County, and it was uh, Craco Lake, which is northeast of Grayling. If anybody knows where that where Grayling is, you know, it's get out my map of Michigan here. It's you know up here in the middle, so if you can see that. But anyway, long story short, someone a local there actually saw elk go through the ice on this lake and called the, the authorities and conservation officers, local rescue people came out and tried to uh, get as many as they could, uh, but 12 of them drowned. And I don't know if that's 12 total or if that was 12 that they recovered because they said they didn't recover all of the elk. It says a dozen elk f fell through the ice and died despite a desperate res rescue effort, according to the, yeah. the article. So, uh, you know... They said it was two inches thick of ice, and I'm like, okay, so you put a bunch of elk on ice. I know when, like, when you and I get out on, on ice, you know, and, and we, we're into that three, four-inch range, you know, when we start to go out, you know, first ice, best ice, all that kind of garbage. But if you get on thin ice, I mean, you hear it pop and crack, but elk are like, we don't even equal one. No. And there's 12 out there. And they, how did they get out far enough to get over 50 feet deep of water and fall through? I, I, that, to me, is mind-blowing. Right, it's it just a, uh, you know, and that's not even, you know, that's a tragic thing of 12 elk that happened. Um, whatever made them go down the slope out onto the lake, mm -hmm. whether they were pushed or whatever might have happened. But I tell you what, it, it's one of those things that you just, man, nature can be cruel. Absolutely. Uh, I, Mark, I see your question, and you know what, we'll, we, we will answer that. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I just I kind of wanted to talk about them two things. It's because they were in the news. One was yesterday, and then the other one was, uh, you know, due to that storm down in Kentucky that uh, it just made me think about that. So uh, I tell you what, we'll bump it up here on the first break. We're going to take a quick step outside, 
And when we come back, we're going to answer a couple questions here that Mark has for us. So we're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. Okay. Yeah, that... I could it, only imagine the sight of them all just... Well, it makes me wonder, too, did did something push them out there? Or well, were, exactly. Or were they trying to cross? Yeah, you know, maybe it was in a, in a typical situation, if it was spring or summer, that could be a short point that they could cross the lake and swim it real quick. Maybe. But like wolves? Well... You know, I, I don't know. No, exactly. Wolves, coyotes, anything pushing them? So it just makes you wonder, but... Uh, Right. Twelve elk, man. I mean, you know that. That's that's, 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 that's a good amount for for that area because, you know, they try to keep the herd right around six hundred. Well, that's ish, it, right? That you know. that right there could impact next year's hunting season. It could very well could. You know, and maybe even a couple of years, you know, down the road. So, I'm trying to remember what episode this is. <laughs> All right. Just kind of. Trying to get my hands wrapped around this thing here, and I think I don't know something's moved here, and it's just not quite right. You know, you get used to something being a certain way, and, and it's just different. I don't know what it is. All right, and that's not going to work. This computer is going to crash on me. It's going to be one of those nights. Save it for the last. Yeah. So, um, and I think it's going to probably do push an update. If it does, we'll just keep going. Right, and, and Nancy wants you to turn up the volume. Turn it up a little bit more. Hopefully, Please. it's not over modulated. We'll we'll we'll, we'll take a, just a little more here. She's calling you, Michael. Uh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Right. <laughs> I am in trouble. But yeah, so you know things like that happen all the time. Uh, this person got to see it. I'm sure further north, where there's less people that that see this kind of stuff, that this happens more frequently than it, it's reported. Well, and, you know, and I imagine it happens, too, where it's not even noticed. You know, how many, right, how many exactly. do we lose, you know, to whatever. You and, know. And, that, and that was elk. Mm -hmm. What about uh, just regular deer mm -hmm. or any other animal that goes out on the ice when it's thin? Right, well, we talked to a gentleman here just south of Fenton uh, a year, uh, well, yeah, a year ago this summer, and... He had pulled up that eastern, what is it, the eastern elk yep. skull that they had found. It was actually wrapped around a rope off of his Di dive yeah, platform, yeah, you know, in, in a private lake that had been there for, what did they estimate that elk to be? Uh, 1800s, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the middle 1800s-ish. So, yeah. you know, uh, for whatever reason, they were, he was out there, so. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to keep on trucking here, and we'll just pick up the audio off of the record here later. So, uh, here we go. Stand by three, two, and one. Welcome back, second segment of the show. And we've got a question here from Mark Coleman. And he was asking, uh, speaking of this year, because we're kind of wrapping up the year, what is your top three best things that happened with each of you this calendar year? And he says he can think of a couple for each of us here. So Captain Kayak. Yeah, man. I uh man, I kayaked a lot this year. Do I gotta get you a captain hat? No. I think I do. No. I think I do. No. I think we might see one up here in twenty twenty two. I don't think so. Um I figured that I put on between two hundred and twenty five to two hundred and fifty miles this year kayaking. And obviously Nancy kayaked a little more than I did, so she's probably upwards of 250, maybe a 275. Because I know she took a couple excursions um, with some other people that I couldn't be on because of work. So that to me this year, that that was definitely a highlight. Highlight this year, uh, the camping I did. We we took eight camping trips this year. Got to see some beautiful places in Michigan that. I wouldn't have seen otherwise, you know, some beautiful sunsets, beautiful trails, uh, kayaked, like I said, kayaked a lot, but it's just, I spent a lot of time in a different way this year in the outdoors than what I have in the past. Yes, you did. You know, most of it in, in the past was wrapped around hunting, uh, and then, then hunting this year, you know, this year for me, you know, I was able to take two deer, got to go to the UP and hunt. I hunted the UP of Michigan for the very first time in my life at Danny's camp. So, you and know, he had fun. We had a blast. And it uh, didn't last long. <laughs> My hunt didn't. It lasted about an hour. 
<laughs> so it happens. Yeah, it, it happens. And then uh, opening day of uh, firearm deer season at my camp, you know, I shot an eight point buck. And I guess looking back at, at the hunting side of things, I, I don't know, did I talk about this on the show? But, you know, it was one of them things where I didn't know if after the year I had You know, we time. haven't really talked about our hunting episodes. Mm, we haven't. No. I didn't we, think we, so. We talked about November. Okay. Or early November when we were yeah. on Door Patrol. But not our, our we firearm. Not our firearm. Yeah. We were saving that to this time. All right, well, I will, since we just brought it up, then let's, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and Willie Bird is in the house tonight. Right. Hey, thanks for joining us, man, all the way from Virginia. Uh, but, you know, this year, it, to me, it was more about did I still have that same push and desire to get into the outdoors and, and, and hunt like I used to because I'd taken a full year, year and a half off due to a uh, life situation. And once I got back in stand, especially when I was at your place, you know, I just kind of settled in and, and you know, kind of chilled and thought about it a little bit and just kind of taking it in. And when that doe come in, I mean, the very first thing, when I looked up and seen her coming, man, it was just like, wham. I mean, it was, just, it, it was just instinct, you know. It was just, I went through, every, you know, everything that culminates in taking a deer, you know. It, right. was, it was just just like it never stopped. Uh, the same way for rifle season, when the buck came through, man, it, it was just like, whoop, there's a buck, yep, that's got antlers on it, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep, outside the ears tall, yep, and grabbed the rifle and got on it, you know, it, it, it's, it was just like riding a bike. Yep, when you have doubts of that, whatever happens in your life to interfere on that, you can always go back out to the woods, it seems like, and recoup that quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, it, uh, you, you said Willie Bird's in the house. Congratulations to him because I think he won Big Buck Contest down in West That's Virginia. right, he did. Congratulations to him. Um, but, um, you know, we've been through a little bit, you and I, this last two years. Yep. Besides COVID, personal life. But, um, yeah, you just, you know, you, you, you question yourself and what you do, but if it wasn't for um, getting back out into the woods or a partner Mm -hmm. You know, you can say, hey, Mike, let's get up to the cabin. You can yep. shoot a doe. I don't care. Um, or family. Um, my daughters, um, you know, we're going up to the cabin. You just check yourself and go, yep, I missed it. I'm back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the big things in general for this year, going back to Mark's, I think it started off when we could actually go shoot leagues. In January? In January. Well, actually, or was it late January? Well, when, when, when did we jump back it, in the league? So I was trying to figure that out myself, and uh, I think it was late January, because it was only eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So I think they delayed it for the month of, of January, and we started in February. Yeah, it's when they started just relaxing a few things on COVID to where we could actually do some things indoors in small groups. Right, and so we were able to actually get in a small group to shoot archery, mm -hmm. and that was like a OMG moment of just being able to talk and Yep. Talk with other people and just be in a setting where we we love to do it and have fun, mm -hmm. shoot. Um, and it started there, right? And uh, we we're that was the beginning of the year, which led us into, like, we had to shut down for a few months because Mike was moving and, and, and going through that stuff. But when you got into the, into, the, into the spring, into the summer, that's when you were doing your kayaking. Yep. You know, and I was, I was going up to the cabin doing you know whatever but just loving the outdoors now this year i had a wedding in september uh kelly my oldest was getting married so i had to go through the shower and and all that so we had a summer full of those activities which was just fantastic mm -hmm. which kept your mind going but yeah you go through all that you get to september you start to see the leaves change and it's like yeah time to get back out in the woods yeah it's just certain times of year you know bring out certain things in you you know we, it's just i think it's just inbred into people that love the outdoors whether it's kayaking snowshoeing hiking uh canoeing hunting riding a horse i mean anything on the outdoors i mean once you get kind of get back into what your thing is um you know it, it kind of 
it, it re-centers you. You know, when, when your life gets turned upside down and you get turned inside out, it's like, what do you go back to? You go back to the things that you know and love. Exactly. You know, and that's the things that, that it kind of ground, grounds you again and centers you to where you can actually start to rise up out of the ashes, so to speak. Yep. Um, well, thanks, Ray. We appreciate that, man. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Uh, again, um, another shout-out. We'll get it out to Randy Stop and Hagen out at uh, C3 Mints now, Beyond the Hunt. Did you see, I don't want to chase a rabbit for a second, did you see that the state of Idaho at their Capitol building, they put their Christmas tree up? Randy planted that tree 25 years yes, ago. Yes, I saw that I saw that post. That was that pretty was, cool. That was very cool. You know, and, and, and you're right, Dustin, uh, the woods cures a lot. Hey, JPO's made it. Hey, what's going on, Paul? Or Amy. Or Amy, yeah, it could be either one. Who's, who, who's, who's driving? That's right. But uh, yeah, it, it, we've had we've had, boy, could we write a, another show on life? But you know, we got back out in the woods, and, and you're right, Mark. Uh, there's some been like Mike is talking about his hunting, knowing if he could get back out there and do it. And getting him up there uh, was a priority for me to get him up to the cabin, just to get him out. And then he went up to his own place. Well. Really. You know, when, when you get older, as we are, <laughs> you start getting up there a few years. My dad went through this, and I started to see it in him at about age 60-ish, 62-ish, right after he retired. Um, but he he started backing away a little bit from the outdoors up north, you know, and then I, I kind of got more involved up there and, and started working at camp more, taking more of that responsibility under my belt. And, you know, and then it was like, okay, so after what all happened here in the last couple of years, it's like, you know, well, where are my priorities at? Is is it doing all this work or should I kind of step back and just enjoy the time I've got left? I don't mean to sound morbid, but, I mean, you've only got so many hunts in you. So many, so many opening days. Yeah, you know, and we never know when that last one's going to be. And it's like, it, at this point in time in my life, it's like, you know, I need to, I need to enjoy – family, friends, and the people I love, and being with them, and, and, and quit worrying about who's going to get all the work done, you know, so to speak. So, and, and that's kind of what this season did for me. Well, you know what, uh, along those lines, is, is I've done that as well. Uh, and I think spending time up at the property with the kids doing food plots and building things, that's kind of where we're at. It's mm -hmm. like doing it all together and right. putting it together, getting it out into the woods together, getting my brother up there, whoever's going to help us build it and mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's those weekends long weekends or week that we have together to either build it plant it uh work with the cousins on the property uh i think i've talked with my my cousin about that and it's just um we find ourselves bringing up our families and then that's our time mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing you know and ray brings up a great point here he's talking about certain times of the year with the smells associated with them that help calm be uh bring a calming effect to you smell of wood burning stove actually helped him get through his deployment in Iraq. Uh, you know, it's funny you bring that up because and, and Nancy can testify to this. When we go camping or when we're kayaking or when we're even just outside somewhere and I and I'll I'll smell a campfire and I'm like I said, You smell that? <laughs> and, it, and it evokes uh, an internal feeling in you. You know well, a it, good feeling for it's that it's almost like a piece of a relaxing calm yeah when you're in a campground and, and you sit there and you first of all you look through the campground and you can see the different fires yeah and what people are burning <laughs> or shouldn't be burning maybe <laughs> right um and then the to get that 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 smoke that 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 smell you know it, it definitely it definitely calms you mm -hmm. and definitely um it, it's one of those things that you know whether it's a bonfire out in the backyard or up at the cabin or wherever camping yeah, it's one of the things, right? Yep. And and, and just so we know, everybody uh, from JPO Game Calls, we have the handsome one on tonight. Okay. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. We 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 got might have a little war tonight. Uh, I, you know, Willie Bird is from Virginia, but I just see uh, Mr. Sias has stepped into the cabin tonight. You know, and he says he's from West Virginia, the the, the best, best Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. So, boys. Y'all can have at it, just play nice. Right? <laughs> and uh, good to see you, Tim. And, and 
uh, I want to reiterate what Dustin has just said too. Thank you for your service, Ray. We Absolutely, it. Ray. Thank you very much. Um, guys like you, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing today. So, but no, you know, I the hunting season to me was awesome. Uh, you know, I shot a buck opening day. Not everybody can say that. There's people that still can't say that, you know, right now, uh, you know, for whatever reason. So I was blessed and I was able to, you know, put more meat in the freezer. So that's right. It, it was a great, to me, it was a great hunting season. And, you know, I got one tag left and who knows, you know, there might be an, a small opportunity before season's over for me to get back out and put a doe down. So who knows? Well, and that's the thing, right? And I, and I had the wedding in September to, for, for marrying uh, Kelly and Gabby, and then I was able to get Gabby to come up with us in November, mm -hmm. and she filled both of her tags. Yeah, that was cool. That was uh, definitely a highlight of the year. We uh, caught four deer back that weekend. Yeah, that was kind of fun. That uh, It was one of the things that, uh, luckily I got the big stand-up freezer. There you go. <laughs> or else Kelly was going to be running out to buy one. I said, don't run out and buy one yet. I Kelly, got I got freezer space. <laughs> if you need to bring, uh, you can bring deer over here. Can't guarantee that it, it'll stay there, <laughs> but you can bring it over. Right, and and we and and and, and Tim is saying that we are correct. <laughs> West Virginia is the best. Virginia. Oh, so man. it's already started. It started. It has started. And, you know, that's what I love about doing this podcast. You know, uh, you know, everybody says, "Well, you know, why have you done so many episodes? Well, how are you still doing it?" Because I love doing it. I love talking with everybody here. Uh, gives everybody an opportunity to be able to, you know, converse with each other. And, uh, and yes, Nancy, and the best blessing of all is that it tastes delicious. You got that right. Uh, I'll tell you what, Nancy can cook some venison. That's all I'm going to say. I have to tell you different. You can cook a pretty mean heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I turned you on some deer heart this year. You did. And uh, hopefully next year we'll have... And a few more chances to try it fresh like that again. They, yeah. That was very good. I also would like to try it into a different, a few other meals. Recipes? Yep. There we absolutely. Go. So, I'd be up for that. I know, right? And that's one of the things, you know, like Nancy said overall, though, the taste is you can't beat it. And the, way, and the way prices are going up. Don't get me started. Right? So. You know, and, and, and that's the thing. When you, when you get out there and get back out in the woods and you start feeling that, calm coming back and that mm -hmm. the, you know your perceptors picking up that big old squirrel coming at you but it's awesome you know uh I'll tell you what let's take a quick step outside uh, mark just keeps firing questions at us so i'll tell you what uh, i want to answer a couple of them so we're going to step outside we're going to take our next break and we'll be right back after this now that i got the uh the recorder back up and running over here All right let's see if we can keep this this computer going it might be a time, might be a need to uh, refurb this thing. Mark Coleman, what kind of book would you like to have from Up North Journal? Answer me that. Actually, I have actually thought of that. I don't know what I'd write about. <laughs> actually, I, I well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I knew that was that was going to be coming. I've heard that before, Dustin. <laughs> oh. For those of you who don't know, get into the chat and look back back here. And uh, Mr. Denny Steiner is in the cabin tonight. Denny. Denny. We what's got for breakfast. Right. That's on. all I can say because you show me. I, I actually made bacon and eggs today for breakfast because I'm as tired of watching as you know. Every morning, Denny shows. We're not. We're not going to probably not going to go to ATA this year, uh, just due to a lot of things. But uh, <laughs> wow, Tim just shot back at him. This is getting bad, guys. <laughs> uh, but Denny, uh, we need to plan a trip down to come down and, and uh, see your uh, your room down there, and maybe uh, partake in one of those breakfasts. So we got to plan something here soon, right? We'll even record a show down there. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Stand by in three, two, and one. Welcome back, everybody. Third segment of the show. If you're listening to the show, there's reasons you got to go to Facebook or YouTube and, and and watch this show because the comments get really good. In the chat. In, really in the chat, in you know, when, you, when, break. when you've got people from West Virginia <laughs> and Virginia <laughs> that can't get along in the same room, right. luckily there's no sand. They'd be throwing in each other's eyes. Right. 
you know, it, it's one of those things. You got to check it out, folks. So, so you check out our live Facebook feed. You go over to YouTube, check it out there, and, and see what goes on in the chat. It's not all us. That's right. That's not always us. So, but uh, Mark, he had asked a question right before I went to break. He said, is there a book in the future for Up North Journal? And Danny asked him what kind. He says, the journey of Up North Journal highs and lows. You know, I actually, I could write, I could write a book on that. You know, but ugh, I don't know. I don't know how I want to say we this. We actually could write a book if we were to go back and just kind of look at the, the shows that we did mm -hmm. and see what we did. We could we could pull out stories from all those shows because you know it, it was something we did in in real life yeah or something to that effect which led to most of the shows yeah um, you know I've met a lot of good people I've met some bad people um, I will say this and that's all I'm going to say about it is when you get into the outdoor industry and you 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 start working with friends and family and things of that nature it can make you or break you and, and and it's amazing what will split friendships oh absolutely no doubt about and that's it. all i'm going to say about that but it's you know but this guy right here uh we spent he's been the longest running co-host of this show and i expect him to be here until we say we're done with this show i plan on it and the guy from michigan is trying to uh to get the Virginia boys to calm down and can't get along. The guy, wh which one is that from Michigan? Oh, the, the handsome one. Oh, the handsome one. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I plan on being here till the day we say we're done. Yeah, it's because uh, I tell you what. If it wasn't for the show, God, who knows? But the show has got me through a lot. Yeah, obviously, F is yeah. obviously the, the friendship is the most important thing. Absolutely. Um, but yep. to write a book, yeah. Uh, which you talked about working with people in the industry. One of the one of the sad highlights of this industry is because we're so knit. When you lose somebody, um, it's tough. It's really tough. And when we lost Nick Percy, that was shocking to say the least. We lost Nick this year. The, was it the year before or two years before when we lost Jim? And was Jim in the same year as uh, uh, Tread Barda? Tread Barda last year. No, Tread was two, two, years ago? two years ago. So that means three years ago was Jim. I thought, no, mm -hmm. Jim and Tread were the same year, I do believe. But anyway, we've lost three tremendous people. In, in the last three years, and, and that's true. When you when you work with, well, we lost Tim Anderson this year from Mossy Oak. Another uh, out of the blue, get, out of the in, blue, get an man. email and says, oh. Yeah, so, you know, that's the one thing, I mean, you, you form a lot of friendships and. Uh, like like Denny Steiner, we met him yeah. years ago at the APA. Uh, thank you to Mr. Paul Penix, another industry favorite. Give me my start in the industry. Right, and he said, hey, you gotta, you gotta talk to this guy. Yeah. Boy, were we in for a treat talking to that guy. Right, Denny? So. He's going to ATA. But, uh, yeah, we meet a lot of good people. Uh, Tim Andrus from Rush Outdoors, who we're going to be meeting up with in February, actually, hopefully. Uh, that's the plan, if everything goes according to plan. <laughs> yeah. This year with Michigan and COVID. Uh, and actually, speaking of a couple of those things that, that are in the forefront and things that have been either postponed for a while or canceled, uh, let's talk a little bit about that because we just found out last week and you've heard us talk about this for the last year. The head-to-head -head competition, or the oh. fishing tournament, the walleye pro, uh, pro Walleye Series, 2020, 2022 is not going to happen uh, due to just the industry and the way things, and supply chains and the money flow and all that. They've decided that they're not going to have the tournament. And we just, we just talked with... Uh, we just talked to Robert Blosser the week before. It was the Wednesday before the Monday that it came out. Yeah, and it came out that Monday. That's and how quickly that happened. Right, and we were looking forward. He even said it, looking forward to next year seeing us when they're in town, but that's not going to happen. So yep. we're going to reconnect with those guys to find out what their plans are. Mm -hmm. I know they're not going to stop fishing, Right. so we'll have to figure out what they're doing. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, it's this whole thing, and, and we talked last week with um, – um, Island Armory and the, 
the shot show itself in Las Vegas is a mess because of all the rules they're applying. Yep. Uh, when you hear the, the Sig Sauer company pulling out, yep. that's a huge one. Well, and look how many people pulled out of ATA this, com this coming, uh, or next month. You know, there's going to be a lot of big, big companies that are not going to be there. Right, exactly. So. PSE will be there. Um, so we hope to contact uh, Bobby, find out how it went. We'll talk with him after. You're right, Ray. Uh, this industry is very small. Uh, it is important to be an honest and good person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one of the things we take pride in is, is when we work with, with supporters of this show, we kind of vetted them out. We, we, we don't really nilly things, mm -hmm. typically. Usually use, use uh, things before we say yes. Right. Get hands on, um, make sure that it, it is what it's, they say it is. You know, uh, I've, seen them on the, I've seen them checking in on the show, base maps. Yep. Um, you used it before we even interviewed them. And yeah, used it for two years, actually, I do believe. Right, and then, you know, got them on the show. So it, it, we, we take pride in that, that, you know, we're not talking out our butts. Yep. We, we talk about that. So you're right, right? Uh, reputation and everything is important and honest in, in the show. And uh, good, bad, or indifferent, um, I, I've, seen, I've seen people in the industry – um, and, and I'm not knocking anybody. It just it just came to mind when you when he said honest and everything. Uh, they didn't want to show something on video because it, they they thought it was bad. Where I'm like, well, show it and tell us why it's bad. Right. Is it, right. The, the honey is not pretty at times. Right. You know. And so it, it, it could be a, turn that into a learning experience. Well, just for instance, the buck I shot this year. You know. Um, it was a shot that did not put it down permanently. I had to put a second shot on that deer, and it it crushed me. I mean, I, I sat by that deer for 20 minutes after I put it down, and it it, it had an effect on me. I mean, I felt horrible. Um, it was a fatal wound, but I, just, I wasn't going to let it sit there and suffer. You know, and it's just things like that. It, it, you know, be honest about it. You know, talk about it. You know, what, what caused the shot? Well, you know, the deer was on the move. It was running quartering away uphill on me and I shot and for whatever reason the shot was high right exactly you know and look at us in November three out of four deer mm -hmm. for this one went 60 yards yeah. yours went 60 Gabby's went 40 mine went 30 three of the four were heart shots yeah and the, the buck was a little bit more tougher it was a liver shot it was definitely a kill shot it mm -hmm. wasn't you know and we had to do that yep as well and that was just great comedy that is but it's watching a youngster you know, learn. Ca learn how to handle the situation. Right. Yep. And that's why we didn't also run the sound because it was pretty good. Yeah. But it's just those learning moments. Take that. It, it really bugs me when they say that. I don't want to show it because it, it – no, show it and explain to me why it was bad. What, yeah. what, what Was it you? Was it the twig? Was it your equipment? Yep. You know? Make it a learning experience. It just, oh. Yeah, Tim, you know what? I, I completely understand. Um, you know, it, from COVID to issues, uh, it, it does affect your drive in the outdoors. And it puts things into perspective, you know. And, and just like Danny and I have said, you know, we've had the fortune of having uh, the ability to be able to, you know, get into shows, uh, close shows, and meet people, and work for great companies, and have companies support us. Uh, here on the podcast and building those relationships but at the end of the day it's it's about friends and family and loved ones and spending that time together and you've got to learn to you know sometimes you got to cut bait a little bit and back up and reevaluate before you, you jump in you know and get back in so deep it's uh, or maybe you just cut bait and you back up and you, you have to let go of some things right exactly Mark Coleman uh, the wife is winking at her at him uh, yeah, yes, have a great Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. New Year. You be safe as well. We'll see you in 2022. And we got to get Mark on the show here. Yes, soon. we do. We'll probably have him on. I talked with him prior to coming on the show, so we'll fit him in. We'll get him in and um, you know, talk, talk easy talk. You know, and he, he had asked a couple questions uh, earlier on, too, and I'm just looking at the time here that we got, if, if we got time to answer before we go to the break here. It was about, you know. So, uh, about the book. If we could do a book. Yeah. It would be interesting. Um, hey, I know, a, I know a writer. I wonder if he would write it for us. I, I, know, a, I know a couple of writers, actually. <laughs> we, we, we have, uh, 
we have partnered ourselves with a couple of writers. Speaking of, I don't have the book here that I really wanted to give a plug to tonight. Don't oh, the the, uh, the hunting camp. The hunting camp? Yep, that hunting camp. Go over to Amazon, uh, a friend of ours, and it's about a hunting camp here in Michigan. It's called That Hunting Camp. See if you can find that real quick. I'll uh, pull you that keep up. talking and I'll look. Bill Fredericks. Uh, and it's on Amazon. But anyway, uh, it'd be a great stocking stuff for a last-minute gift. And I think you can probably still... I don't know. I think, is it is it getting too close? What's the date today? 16th? Yeah, it's, it's going to be tight. But if you got Prime, you can probably get Is that it there? There you the go. The Hunting Camp paperback? That Hunting Camp. Yep, there you go. It is on Kindle for $7.99 or $12.99 in paperback. And I'll tell you what, that is the book I was reading when I shot my doe this year. And it was also the book I was finishing up reading when I shot my buck. There you go. See, it's a good luck book. Uh, you can try to get it. You're probably going to have to pay for it if you want it. But yeah. if you do Kindle, isn't that electronic? Yes, it is. So you can do an electronic download yep, or paperback. But that is an actual hunting camp here in Michigan. Called, it's uh, Singing Hills is the name of their camp. And I believe it was formed back, I think he said in the book, in 1939. Or 38. 1938. Our camp where I hunt was formed in 1939. So there's a little bit of history here in Michigan with deer hunting. So, uh, but I know Mark's not listening now, but if he goes back to listen, uh, he said the top three best things that happen with each of you are. No, that's we already answered that. Dog on it. It was about gear, something about gear that I wanted to answer. Oh, favorite new gear that you got this year? A bow, broadheads, kayak, recipes, what have you? What's what's the best new thing you got this year? Favorite thing? Won't lie, it was G5 dead meats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to deny it. Those things did their job, needed to do what they needed to do, and, yeah, yeah it, it smoked them, and, yep, it's all good. Um, the favorite thing I got this year, and it's not uh, anything new, it was a, a resubscribing, and was to base maps, and I used that every time we went kayaking, and I got to – log the the time the distance traveled and it laid out a mark of uh actual mark the actual rivers and it shows up in red to where i can see what parts of these rivers i've traveled and what parts i haven't yet so uh for that just having that on on hand again to me was invaluable so right exactly and that i tell you what that's um base maps worked out good i used that too I plotted uh, my property with it. That was a good. That was a good one. Dead meat was good. Uh, new new use for the easy cuts. Yeah. Um, Cracked the rib cage pretty quick, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, big shout out to the Yamaha guys, uh, showing us how to use the Strike King, um, the lures and how to rig them. Mm -hmm. So I tried them. I had some bites. So that was kind of cool on the fishing side. So I see, I see you got another uh, writer friend of ours. Stuff I do. It, you know, it, we would not be amiss if we didn't talk about Jerry Lambert. We've had him on the show several times, and he's got several books out. Uh, the first one, Trophy White Tales, if you go left to right. Um, I tell you what, if you want a great little book that e each tale is kind of cool, and then uh, The Hunting Spirit uh, which is an actual picture. That's a that's a guy that's standing up in a tree in Africa, and then uh, the other two books that he has there as well. So you can go check him out on Facebook, give him a shout, go over there and get a book. So, you know, Jerry's a great guy. Like we talked about earlier in the show, his brother was able to throw his his lottery of winning a uh, Michigan Elk tag. Michigan Elk tag. I tell you what, man, when you get one of those, yeah, you have definitely won the lottery. Right. No doubt about it. I'll tell you what, we're bumping up on the last break of 2021. So we're going to step outside, take the last break for this year, for this show, and we'll be back and we'll wrap it up. We'll be right back after this. All right. So Tim got the go-ahead for the West Virginia late waterfowl season from his doctor. So he's excited to get back out. Awesome. Adam Wynn loves the new studio. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, this this 
redo it was a long time okay coming. so if we work it out with denny steiner for a visit he's going to try to get paul Penix there and he says it could be epic dude i don't know if we've got en enough uh, digital chips to record that much video i think that would be more than one show that would be like a month's worth maybe uh, <laughs> maybe more right <laughs> my brother had pickled deer heart your brother did yeah, um, so, Terry, you're listening, right? And uh, by the way, Terry, yes, I can shoot straight. There you go. We found out that uh, you were questioning Mike's a ability to shoot straight. Um, From and one of my coworkers that he ran into. Right? So there you go. Mike can shoot straight. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Last segment of the show and the last segment of 2021. Uh Looking ahead, let's you know, looking ahead to All 2022. Right. We already talked about shot show is going to be a little wonky this year. ATA is a little wonky, and we're not probably not going to go this year. I, I really don't see that happening. We're, we're hoping everything that happens in Michigan um, stays the the trend. So far, it is. There's supposed to be wellers on the west side of the state, which we'll try to get over to. Um, ultimate fishing show. Ultimate fishing show, which leads you into. MUCC's Outdoor Rama and Tim Andrews will be in town. I, I, I think he might be. I don't know if he's double dipping his shows if he's coming back for the other show, but we'll find out. For Wellers? Yeah. No, not for Wellers. For the uh, there's another show, but I don't know if it's on. Okay. And speaking of things that are on and not on or moved, uh, one thing we we haven't mentioned yet is tack. Total Archery Challenge. Oh, yeah, that's some huge news. Huge, huge news out, out of TAC. Uh, Michigan, for whatever reason, this year is the year that Boyne Mountain is doing a big, huge facelift and reconstruction of whatever they're doing up there uh, to their ski slopes. So, with that being said, they're going to do that during the summer, obviously, because we're going into winter. So, TAC, we can't do the Total Archery Challenge there on the mountain. But TAC is... Love Michigan so much because it's sold out the last two, three, four years, what have you. They they're looking at another venue in in I think negotiations or trying to pick out the actual one. They've narrowed it down. Anyway, they're coming back this year if all goes according to plan, and we just don't know where yet. And I'm on uh, in their Facebook group, and I'm every day I'm looking, looking, looking to see when they're going to announce it. They said they're going to announce soon because. I think uh, all the venues have to be kind of locked in. Well, they got to know a travel plan. Tra yeah, for the travel plan, <laughs> I think by the end of February. So we're talking within the next two months. And uh, JPO Game Calls will be at the Hunting Time Expo. Yeah, Paul, I think that's the one we were talking about, uh, being on the west side of the state. Uh, I know you're going to be there, and hopefully there's a few other people we know that are going to be there. So. Yeah, so we'll be camped out in booths over there as long as the shows are going on. Right, and that's what, you know. And Jerry Lambert says, thanks, guys. I just returned to the show and saw you talking about my books. Absolutely, Jerry. So, got to get them uh, last-minute Christmas gifts in. So, Daniel Burns. How's it going? Um, but, yeah, looking into 2022. There was a, so, take that 2022 moment and flip it back to 2021. That was another great moment when we were able to actually go shoot outdoors on a mountain in the tack. summertime. Tack. Yeah, tack, tack was fabulous. You know, uh, the year prior to that, COVID had hit. We still got to go. That was in August. And we yeah. actually went to that right before I met Nancy. Right. We took the camper. We went up there. Uh, we had a great time. This year, we made it a one-day run. Uh, we'll see where it lands this year. Maybe we can make it a, a, a little bit longer stay. We'll invite everybody up. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll let everybody know when they sell tickets because, folks, if you haven't tried it and you want to try it, and, and really, take it with a grain of salt. It's just being fun. Absolutely. Because, yeah, you know you're going to lose arrows or you're going to try to bust them or whatever you're going to do, but just go have fun. Absolutely. That's Some of these guys, they, they really get serious into it, and that's fine. <laughs> However you want to do it. But if we can make it a few day, a weekend, a long weekend, depending on where it's at and when. Right. Uh, I hope it's um, close. close. If it's in the lower, it's fine. Well, the issue is right now it, I've already got four camping trips planned for <laughs> this coming year. And as and you can only book them six months out in advance. The way the state of Michigan allows you to do it. So as we get further, I, I want TAC 
to announce because we're starting to get into that time frame of when they're going to have their event and the time that's starting to open up for camping. And I want to be able to, to do both. Right, exactly. So so, um, so stay tuned. When Mike, Mike usually has a heads up in the Facebook group as to what things are going to happen. And um, we'll, we'll let you know. Yep. Uh, yes, Ray Steer, have a great uh, Christmas yourself and uh, Happy New Year as well. But uh, as we get into, hopefully we'll get into some spring turkey hunting. Can't look, you know, and, and I'm planning on that. I, I'm, I'm planning on that. I'm planning on probably, I'll probably try to hunt the UP up at the cabin. It's not like you don't have birds up there. My gosh. Right? Flocks. Flocks. So that's kind of where we want to go. Uh, probably go up there for turkey. Uh, then get into to summer. Um, we're going to do some fishing. Um I would like to do a little kayak fishing this year. That there would require me getting a different style of kayak, but I'm up for it. There you go. You know, I got I got a truck now, so truck will travel. Truck so, will travel. You know who's not on is Ron Moses, who always gives me grief about pulling my camper with that Jeep. And so I do have a pickup now. Oh, you know, I don't even know if Ron knows. I don't oh, think so. That's right. the first time I've talked you to him. You know, and, and the Ron Moses, you're going to eventually get this show. I know you will. Uh Man, thanks for whatever you're, you're, all you've been doing, been trucking around the country, delivering whatever you need to deliver because... That's right. Hats off to that guy. I've been watching you go from state to state, weather to weather, and... He's and, on the road. Yep. Almost seven days a week. Yep. And thank you very much for, for getting out there and delivering what needs to be delivered. <laughs> and he had a good season, too. So, um, but yeah, and then we're going to be heading right into fall again. So stay tuned. We'll probably have another interesting fall. What are you looking forward to next year the most? If you had to pick one thing, what, what are you looking forward to the most? Can I break it up into six months? The first six months, yeah. I'm always looking yeah. forward to turkey season. Mm-hmm. That I just, you get into that mode and it's like, let's, let's get up north, let's get, some, get, get our turkey on. Okay. And then next, in next fall, we're, uh, the last week of October, which we plan to be up at the cabin, that's hopefully everything works out and everybody can assemble that. I already said they're going to try to assemble. That okay. should be a great bow camp. Okay. Right on. Right. Get you up there again and see if you can't get up there for a few days or for the full week, whatever. And hopefully Mother Nature plays nice, gives us a nice soft spring. And I would like that. It'll be a nice soft shoot. winter as well. Right. Because the thing I'm looking forward to is, is my goal was to try to kayak at least once in every month. Well, Adam Wing's ready for some ice, so you and him got to have a little talk. Because he, he can go further north. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I would. I would really love to ice fish this year. because It would be nice just to get out. We haven't done that in so long. Right? We haven't had weather for it. No. I know we're going to get that two-week window. sprint. Yeah. But then after that, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. But it would be nice to get out and ice shanty, just like we did that one year with the mm-hmm. heater and just stare down two holes and go yeah we're having fun yeah and you're right tim it's always get good to get your turkey on so i guess that's that's the one thing that, you know for this coming year is i i, I was out in march I, I kayaked in march and then we made it through until now i don't know if i'm going to get december in uh right now it's it's not looking like it just because it's so late in the year and might pull off a christmas afternoon one maybe I think maybe we, if you, well, I don't know what the temps are supposed to do, but I don't. See it, it's good. It's going to be in the thirties. You guys go put it in Saginaw River. No, we'll probably put it in in Franken. Is actually oh, Frank, Frank yeah, yeah, runs fast Cass too, River, right? So, no, it doesn't. But it, I don't think it's going to freeze over that quick. I don't think it's going to get that cold. But if we do, if it does, we're going to have to have a river that's flowing pretty quick, in which we can actually go up and hit the Asabo because that in the middle of February is still flowing. Okay, so. That's that's fast enough. It never gets. You just got to make sure that it's not froze somewhere between the take the put in and the takeout. That's the problem. Because if it is, you're hosed. Because <laughs> it's in the middle of the wilderness. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but it, yeah, it, it might be a short stretch. <laughs> you know, we're looking for another another year of shows and, and being on here with all our listeners and and our supporters, having them on and and, and doing things with them and, uh, you know. Maybe, just maybe, we might be able to, t- for two Toms in 2022, Tom Gensel says. Nice. That would be nice. That would be something. 
is, is that what the DNR is actually thinking about? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm you know, if that's what they're thinking about. That would be nice. Uh -huh. and, you know, if they did, I wonder if how they would, if, would it be two in the same zone or would you buy two different tags? Could you put it in different places? There's no way that they could do that. It would be you get two toms. There's no way you could say you could shoot one in, in, in A and then you could only go to B. I don't see that happening. That would be... Well, because well, typically the Upper Peninsula is all one. So if they do two... How do you tag it? I mean, you get... It, it'll be a, a one tag, two tag. So if you get if you get the weak hunt in public land where we used to hunt for, you know, the, the second week of the... Uh, second season, second week of the season, you got seven days to hunt, so you get you can take two in that, two, that week period of time? If they keep the dates the same. You know, right. I, I think I would actually plan it for later on in the season. But I what I would hope is if you're going to take two birds, then split the season, mm -hmm. first half, second half. That's it. Don't have a week. Right. You know, I know they only want five hundred at a time on public land, but I don't know. For, I know that 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 would be interesting to see how that's. Maybe we get Mr. Miller on the show to talk about that. Right? See if he's got anything about it. That'd be awesome. He'd have a take on it for sure. So, but, yep, nope, looking forward to a great 2022. We're going to end 2021 on a great note. Uh, we had a great deer season. Our, our freezers are full, and we're going to roll into 2022, hopefully with all these shows, uh, seeing our supporters, being with them, just being out in the public again, and, and hopefully everything rolls well. I hope so. I really do. I know. I, I'm tired of, of all this COVID stuff getting in the way of things. I'm tired of shows being canceled or being, you know, having to do different things or, or you're not being able to bring product out and put it in somebody's hand. You can't shake hand and all that. I'm just, I'm, I'm over this. Right. And that's one of the things. And, you know, you sit there and you try to, you, you know, but. It all goes away when you go out in the outdoors, whether you're ice fishing, turkey season, fishing during the summer, or fall hunting. It all goes away. Social distancing is the best in the outdoors. That's right. We learned to social distance before anybody else did. And mask up when we wear our, our neck gaiters in the tree stand. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. And uh, JPO Game Call says... Great show tonight, guys. You helped us get through COVID. I was able to go back, listen, and reflect on your shows. Thank, Thank you, man. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. See you next year soon. Yeah, we'll be in touch. We'll, uh, Paul, we'll get a hold of you about the shows anyway. So Absolutely. You're on our list to talk to. So other than that, uh, I think we, it's a wrap for 2021. Uh, we'll, we will be back January 6th. Um, you know what? i tell you what. For those of you who are actually listening to the show right now, uh, private message us on our Up North Journal page or on our personal page on Facebook. Let us know what day you would like the show because we've played around with Wednesday, we played around with Thursday, and we've played around with Sunday. I can tell you Sunday's probably not going to be the day. But is there a day that, that would actually be better like Wednesday night or Thursday night or a Tuesday or a yeah. Monday. We're trying to settle on a date during the week because it just it w as things start to change in our lives and weekends become more important to us. Different. <laughs> Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday is not going to work. Right. So if it's a Wednesday or a Thursday, let us know. Or a Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Yeah. Maybe we'll put a poll up too. That might work. So. Well, everybody, I hope everybody has a very, very Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Uh, we will be back the first week in January. We'll be on Facebook. If you got anything cool, make sure you show it on the page for us or, you know, post it on the page, share it with us. And go out and support our supporters, please. Uh, it helps them see that we're getting the word out about them and then yep. they help us. Um, it doesn't have to be a Christmas gift. It can be for yourself. That's right. So get over to them, check them out, and uh, help those who help us. Make sure if you get a chance to share the show for us, if you're listening to us on iTunes, give us a review. It helps us and helps our supporters as well. So that's going to do it for 2021, folks. Thank you guys and gals for being loyal viewers and listeners, and we'll see you next year. Mm -hmm.